Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of our Video Iwoofs. Here we are today with our hosts, Dr. Ian Dunbar, Kelly Dunbar, and me, Jamie Dunbar. What are we talking about this time, Kelly? This time we are going to talk um, about a very important topic, which is the difference between socializing your puppy and traumatizing your puppy uh -huh. by overdoing it. Do you mean traumatizing by trying to socialize it? Yes. I well, get, yes. Oh, yeah, okay. no, not just... <laughs> the difference between socializing... Tra traumatizing yeah, I, I, your puppy and... <laughs> drowning it. So the notion <laughs> is that you can do too much socialization. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I guess you can put it that way. Yeah, which I would totally, absolutely disagree with. I mean, I, I think it's a really, really important point that if you're trying to socialize your puppy at any age, whether it be first home before eight weeks of age or in your new home between eight and 12 weeks or in the dog park, if your puppy looks traumatized, um, that's your sign that he's not sufficiently socialized. And so what you've got to do is more socialization. However, you've got to slow down. You've got to take more time doing it. I mean, you cannot socialize a puppy too much, but the notion of socialization, which I think few people understand, is the point of socializing the puppy before eight weeks is so when we do it in the home and we have our puppy parties at home, it's easy on the puppy because we've got a socialized puppy. So then when we go to puppy class, we're going to puppy class with a socialized puppy. So puppy classes are easy. So then we go to the dog park with a socialized puppy. So we end up, eventually, adolescence is looming and we have a socialized puppy. But I think what we're talking about here is we're getting a puppy from a breeder and this puppy's seen two people, maybe the breeder and her friend. And so now you have a bunch of people around your house, of course the puppy freaks out. It can be overwhelming and there is a Absolutely. wrong way to do yeah. it. So it's not that you can't, there's not too much socialization to do, but there is such a thing as doing too much at one time. If the pup is not prepared for it. But the, the great thing about socializing puppies, as opposed to say socializing a three-year-old rescue dog who's scared of his own shadow and people and other dogs, with puppies you can almost flood them with social stimuli if they had been socialized early on. But if they weren't socialized at the breeders, no. When we get home, we've got to slow down with, with the process. So you can't do too much, but you can move too quickly if the puppy wasn't adequately socialized in the step before. And, and this, I think, is, is definitely what's happening, that puppies are not getting socialized sufficiently in the breeding kennel. They're not seeing 100 people they aren't getting socialized during the first month at home. So now they go to puppy class and they're hiding under the chairs. And that's a problem. And now it's not just plain old socialization, bring on the people and the puppy has a good time. It's now remedial socialization, it's remedial classical conditioning and so on. And that is the situation where yeah, you can do harm. And the puppy goes all these places that, that aren't like part of a normal day's activity, and, and that is too much. That we're going to shopping centers and being petted by 200 people in a row. That can be a shock if you're not adequately socialized beforehand. And just exhausting anyway. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't want to be petted by 200 people in a row, socialized or not. You don't? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds like the, that basically the difference between socializing your puppy and traumatizing it is doing too much too fast. Um, With an ill-prepared puppy. <laughs> this is the but that, but that is puppy. doing too much too fast. Yeah. Is if your puppy was prepared, it wouldn't be too fast. I mean, yeah. right? But the point I'm trying to make is if the puppy has been adequately socialized at the breeders, first month at home, now we take him to a place which is overstimulating, let's say a child's um, softball game. Children running around, wanting to pet the puppy, people, people, people. What a normally healthy, socialized puppy does is he wiggles and waggles and wiggles and waggles and then he goes and falls asleep. Mm. And he's not stressed at all. He just says, boy, I've had too much fun, I'm going to sleep. Right. He's he not carrying in the corner. He's going to take yeah. it. But I, I think whenever you see the signs, whenever you see the signs, that subtle signs like, Someone comes to your house and the puppy gets up and leaves the room. Or the puppy gets off the couch and leaves the room. Man, that's a warning sign that you've got to do more socialization and now, because you have a problem, you've got to spend 10 to 100 times the time doing it. 
Mm -hmm. The only solution for the the puppy is socialization, but now we've got to take the time. But so once your puppy isn't prepared, once it isn't, it's once it has some sort of fear, you need to be really careful to be gentle and slow and take baby steps. So obviously, your stranger comes over and the puppy gets off the couch. The answer isn't to get twenty strangers to come over. No, you know, it's for the stranger to sit down and wait for the puppy to come back and give him a treat. Then take the puppy out of the room and move away from the puppy. And, and this is, it's such a, I mean, I, I guess it's a little known fact, you know, what you do when a puppy is scared or traumatized, or he's grown up now into a big old three year old male shepherd and he's scared and traumatized. The notion is you either stand still and wait for the dog to come to you and you give a food treat. And this is where the use of food treat is mandatory because if the puppy's scared, say Keller's the scared puppy. I cannot walk up and say, it's okay. These are the things that really upset the puppy. So you stay still, wait for the puppy dog to come, or you keep backing away. Come here, sit, treat, come here, sit, treat, come here, sit, treat. What about the notion that it's, um, and you've talked about this, that it's too conflicting to have the the thing that they're afraid of also deliver the food. They can put them in a, in a volatile position. You know, when they talk about the owner delivers the food closer to the problem. Because now you have a dog that might be like food enough, but they're confident enough to come and get a treat, but now they're too close. They've gone closer to them than they want to go to the to Well, the it's person. where, I mean, I've learned from bitter experience working with uh, fearful dogs, which I found out very quickly, bit, that you always want to have more than one food treat in your hand. You don't do this with a shy dog. So the dog, so you're the shy dog now, Jamie, they always come to a distance where they feel comfortable. They have their own comfort zone. You don't do this with a food treat, because mm-hmm. you're thinking, mm, I don't know about this hand here, but I'll take the food treat. The instant you take the food treat, yeah, you've got this hand penetrating your social distance. So I learned from long experience, I keep a bunch of treats in my hand, and when I feed a dog a treat, I let him know I got another one quickly, but then I move away. I make him come towards me for the next treat, then I move away quickly. So you never want to do that. Penetrate the dog's social distance with a treat in your hand and only one treat. Let him come towards you, but always have a second treat there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really important. I mean, that seems like a fundamental thing about, about socialization, that you want to give the dog or the puppy the control of the situation. That you want to give them the opportunity to come towards the whatever is scary. Or retreat. Right. Yeah. Or retreat. You yeah, the, the puppy should They'll be able them. to come in his own good time, but he should be able to retreat. And it's a terrible danger if you keep the puppy on leash or you hold him in your lap and then the scary thing, people are coming up to the puppy. Anyway, if we're talking about regular socialization, you know, I mean, rather than re- rehabilitating fear, if you do it appropriately um, with a confident dog, you're, you know, you're saying there isn't so much, there isn't too much to do, but perhaps, I, I think yeah. there is too much you can do in one day with anybody. I think, you know, after you should know, mm-hmm. after being in a conference all day with a thousand people, coming towards you, it's, you know, it can be exhausting. I love it. I, I want to talk to you all people in the evening can, afterwards. People can get yes, snappy. I, right, right, but a well-socialized <laughs> person will say, okay, yeah. this has been too much, I'm going to go take a nap, or I'm, you know, you I need some alone time. And a well-socialized right. puppy will do the same. Right. They will, at one moment, they are full of so much activity, you can't believe it, greeting people. The next moment, they've gone, boom, and they're asleep. They're not stressed, they're asleep. Or if they decide yeah. they don't want to meet any more people and are more reluctant, never force them. Yeah. You know, if they just say, I've had enough, and they stop happily going up to people, they mm-hmm. might be tired, they might be stressed, but they might just be tired, too. And uh, I think it's important to respect that and take your socialization opportunities um, in small and frequent bursts and mm-hmm. get your puppy out into the normal environments that you would inhabit, maybe some strange ones mm-hmm. here and there. But um, we don't go from child's birthday party to softball game to the mall in one day. Right. So the idea is to keep it pleasant, and I think by keeping it short and sweet and controlling the, you know, the, um, their outcome, you're going to get a, a happier puppy in the long run. And I, I think that's the key, and by controlling the, or doing the socialization in a controlled setting, the two best places were the breeder's kennel, and then the first month at home. This is a controlled setting where we can introduce the dog to many people and many types of people especially men and children, and we can monitor the puppy's behavior, it begins, it's intensive, it ends. And that puppy is going to be much better prepared to go to puppy class and to go to the dog park and then eventually to go to the mall. There we go.
we're all in agreement. Mm -hmm. Good Lord, it's never happened before. <laughs> but we better end on a good note like that. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye, guys. Bye.